Today we'll be doing a review of the Vizio M7 series 2021. We'll be evaluating it on our standardized test bench to see how it performs and if you should buy it. We bought and tested the 55 inch model and we expect the other sizes to perform similarly. This TV is the successor to the 2020 Vizio M series and the naming can be a bit confusing, so check the full model code to make sure you pick the right one. The M7 has a pretty standard design, so there isn't too much to talk about. The stand has two height positions, so you can raise the TV a few inches and fit a soundbar below. The inputs are located on the right hand side, and the four HDMI 2.0 ports allow you to connect a variety of devices. One of the ports also supports ARC or audio return channel that you can connect to your receiver or soundbar to play sound from the TV through your external speakers. The back of the TV fits the visa mount standard so you can wall mount it for a cleaner look and it has a pretty typical thickness so it'll stick out a bit. The build quality of the TV is decent, again pretty standard for a mid-range TV. It's made of plastic and does feel a bit cheap with some flex in the panels. The TV we bought has a bit of damage in the corners and while it's not noticeable at a regular viewing distance, it is in line with the fairly cheap feeling build quality. Now onto our test results, and we'll start with the contrast. This TV has a VA type panel, which results in a high contrast ratio, so dark scenes appear deep and detailed. This is good if you want to watch movies in a dark room, like a home theater environment. Local dimming is a feature to further improve dark scenes for a better movie watching experience, but unfortunately on this TV, it's limited by the relatively few zones, so it doesn't help much. On the other hand, if you want to watch TV in a bright room, then a high peak brightness is important to overcome glare. Unfortunately, the M7 has only a decent brightness, about typical of mid-range TVs. This also means it can't produce bright highlights in newer high dynamic range or HDR content. If you don't care too much about a brighter image, then it might be fine. Also important for a bright room is good reflection handling. You can see that this TV handles reflections all right, but the intensity isn't significantly reduced, so it isn't the best choice for a room with lots of light, or you'll end up struggling to see dark scenes. If you've got a wide seating arrangement, or like to watch TV with family and friends, then good viewing angles help to ensure no one's left with washed out colors or crushed details. Unfortunately on this Vizio, the image quality drops dramatically when viewed off angle, so the image is really only best from directly in front. An overall uniform screen brightness and color is important when watching sports or playing video games to avoid the appearance of clouding known as the dirty screen effect. This does vary between units, but we expect the M7 we bought to be about typical. It's decent overall, but the edges are noticeably darker. In really dark scenes, the black uniformity is noticeably better, so there aren't really any distracting bright areas, which is nice. A lot of people care that a TV has good colors, in the case of the Vizio, the TV can display deep saturated greens, reds, and blues. This is great for those who like an image with extra saturation or for watching high dynamic range content on streaming services. Some TVs struggle to display smooth gradients, so when watching a movie with a sunset, some banding can be visible. In the case of this TV though, it isn't an issue with great gradient performance and there's also an extra contour smoothing setting which helps even more. When playing video games, a fast response time is important for the clearest image without distracting blur. The M7 has a good and fast response time overall, but some blur or smearing may be noticeable in dark scenes. If you look closely at this moving photo taken on the TV, you'll also notice some duplication of the logo. This is because the TV flickers, but overall it shouldn't be a problem for most people. A low input lag is also important for a responsive feel when playing video games, and thankfully, this TV is great in that regard. It only has a 60 Hz panel though, so for extremely smooth and responsive higher refresh rate gaming, it isn't a good choice. Speaking of gaming, this TV supports all of the common signals up to 60 Hz, which is fine for casual gamers, but for a more responsive experience with a new Xbox or PS5, it isn't the best choice. It does support variable refresh rates though, which is good for a tear-free gaming experience. Like other Vizio TVs, this one uses the SmartCast platform. It's relatively easy to use, but it's really focused around streaming content from external services straight on the TV, like from your phone, a Google Home, or Amazon Alexa. If this is the way you'll use it, then it can be a great choice, but overall, this Vizio smart platform does tend to have more bugs and issues than other platforms. The sound of this TV is decent, and about typical of many other TVs. Having said that, TVs are getting thinner and thinner, and good sound doesn't tend to be much of a focus, so if this is something you care about, then an external soundbar or speakers is the way to go. 
So this brings us to the main question, should you buy this TV? Well honestly, it's basically a typical mid-range TV that doesn't stand out too much one way or another. It isn't worth buying this TV unless you really care about the variable refresh rate support, as there are better options out there from other budget manufacturers. Consider the Hisense U6G, or for a model with 120Hz support and HDMI 2.1, the higher-end Hisense UHG.